politicians have realised it's much easier just to hug the NHS, to talk about funding the NHS, rather than having the much more difficult political discussion about saying, yes, we love the NHS, yes, it's a great healthcare system, yes, it, it saves so many people's lives, but it could be so much better than it is today if we actually talk about serious reform. Britain's national myth is that the NHS is something particularly special, unique or interesting when it comes to healthcare. And that might have been the case about 70 years ago, but today it's a bit of a lagger um, of a healthcare system. Uh, practically every developed country uh, has a universal healthcare system. Um, most of those, or, or I should say plenty of those, actually outperform the NHS. Um, in my home country, Australia, you get better outcomes for, for council survival and you get um, better outcomes for, for emergency treatment. All across Europe, you've got a similar story. Um, there's all the focus on the US, but that's, if anything, the US is an, is an outlier and it really closes the debate to, to focus in on the US. I also want to tackle this point about funding, this, this myth that, well, if only we gave more money to the NHS, uh, we could solve all its problems. The reality is that the NHS is as bad as well-funded as the average uh, or slightly above average OECD healthcare system. And in fact, the NHS, um, as a proportion of uh, GDP, gets more healthcare funding than places like Singapore, Australia, and yet does worse on our Outcomes. So although more money is always nice, I don't think just simply throwing more money at the NHS without thinking about structural reform, thinking about competition, incentives, and what actually drives a quality healthcare system, as you experienced in, in Belgium in terms of a lot more consumer choice, um, actually drives better outcomes. That's what the NHS does, this monolithic national one size fits all system often lacks is that touch that actually cares about its patients directly. And although there are plenty of doctors and nurses uh, working their, their guts out and within this awful system, um, it can be much better than it is. So what would you like to see happen? I mean, if you could draw up on a piece of paper now and put it quite simply, what the model should be in this country, what sort of thing might you propose? Well, look, it's obviously very difficult politically to, to redesign the NHS from scratch. I think um, you probably start by looking at something uh, like the model in Germany, where you've got a national insurance-based system where uh, the government requires everyone has insurance, has healthcare insurance. If you can't afford it, um, the government will subsidise insurance so that you have universal healthcare. And then the actual provision of the healthcare is done by uh, largely a mixture of public and private. Um, hospitals and, and GPs. So rather than you having to just go to one NHS GP and having just the NHS, one NHS hospital more or less that you can go to and they're all more or less the same, you actually have different providers competing for your insurance dime. Um, an alternative to that, though, would be looking at somewhere like Australia, where there's a good mix between what is the public healthcare system, which is kind of similar to the NHS. Anyone can access it. It's free at the point of use. It's publicly provided. But secondarily, that is also a, a functioning um, private healthcare system where there's there's rebates and there's tax incentives, particularly for higher income earners to get private health insurance, take some personal responsibility. And what that does is it takes burdens off the public system. Um, so it means the public system in Australia is of higher quality because there's more people using the private system because there's more people seeking private care. So everyone kind of benefits of having a higher quality access to healthcare as a result of the fact that there is a, a functioning um, private system and about half of the Australian population has insurance. And there'll be people out there who would say, well, that's not fair. You know, rich people get to get better health care in the private sector. They'll get to skip the queue. Yeah, so it might actually take some strain off the public provided health care. But, but how is that right by saying just because you've got your more money, you deserve something better? Well, I mean, it kind of almost feels like going back to a, a classic kind of Thatcherism here. You'd rather the poor have lower quality health care provided that the rich also have lower quality health care. I mean, in my opinion, I, I, I care less about potentially um, some gap, which quite frankly already exists in the UK. It's worth noting that about one in 10 people do have private health insurance in the UK and that um, the, the quality of private health care in the UK is world leading. Um, but it's also very expensive and very inaccessible. I'd rather more people have access to that private system as well as in the process taking some burdens off the public system so the quality of public health care improves as well. So I'd rather we, we, we raise all boats in terms of the quality of health care rather than sticking with the status quo in which everyone has equally as, as mediocre health care and, and as a mediocre system. Uh, and why, finally, are we so scared of having this conversation in the UK? Look, I think it's become politically toxic to, to talk about it. Every single election, Labor says, you know, it's 48 hours to save the NHS. Well, here, here, here's a little, here's a little bit, bit of truth for you. The NHS isn't going anywhere. I, I think we've got to be realistic about that. But we do have to have a conversation about its weaknesses and its strengths. Yes, it's very good at providing health care to everyone. No, it's not necessarily top rating when it comes to the actual outcomes of that health care. And what can we do to improve that system? 
Um, and I think that's a discussion that, that's absolutely essential. But unfortunately, politicians have realized it's much easier just to hug the NHS, to talk about funding the NHS, rather than having the much more difficult political discussion about saying, yes, we love the NHS. Yes, it's a great healthcare system. Yes, it, it saves so many people's lives. But it could be so much better than it is today if we actually talk about serious reform. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.